Hello, welcome to the Sports Philanthropy Podcast. I am your host, Roy Kessel, and today we are very excited to have with us Varon Clark. Varon is with Ole Miss, the University of Mississippi, and she is the social responsibility and engagement. And so, Varon, welcome to the show. Hi, Roy. How, how was everything? How are you doing? We're excited to have you with us today and then learn more about the great work you've done in your career and, and specifically what you're doing now at, at Ole Miss. Um, we appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Um, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. So, you know, at, we're going to spend a lot of time on what you're doing at Ole Miss, but I always think it's important for people to understand how you got here and, and really how you developed your love and passion for sports. And so, when you, you go back to your childhood and, and look at your first memories of sports, where did those come from? Wow. Um, off the break, I love sports. Um, I was born into a, a family who um, loved sports. Um, at the early age, about four years old, I, I started to, to really nourish um, you know, what that could potentially look like for me, right? And uh, soccer, uh, base, baseball um, at the at a time baseball and grew into softball and then basketball took a love in basketball um, wanted to to take those those talents and figure out how can I pay for sports well how can I pay for for school and um, had the opportunity to uh, play a collegiate at the collegiate level D2 um, pr a proud alum of an HBCU Central State University uh, played my four years there uh, but I I knew sports wasn't the end all be all. Um, I'm naturally a people's person. Um, and I think sports, you know, it, it curates this, this grit inside of you um, when it comes to just the, the character building and, and just your, you know, your honesty and just how you move within the world. Uh, sports has a lot to do with, with you know, with that. And um, like I said, I knew sports wasn't gonna be the end all be all for what I really truly wanted to do. And, as I was in college um, at my HBCU, I was immersed in so many different other things other than, than playing basketball, right? So I, I was uh, in organizations, I was uh, you know, just being involved within the community. And it was my last year that really took a toll. Uh, I became Miss Central State University and that experience alone knew, I knew that people was my main focus. Um, and from there, um, I knew I wanted to figure out well, what, what to do next, right, after uh, my undergrad. Um, and then my mentor came to me. He said, hey, you should really look into to PR. You know, at the time, I was like, PR, public relations? I'm, I'm not sure exactly what those individuals do. Did some research, and before you know it, ended up uh, looking up Georgetown University. At the time, it was the number one PR program in the nation, so, you know, just with my spirit of being competitive, I, I wanted to, to truly get in. And I, Roy, I tell you this, and a lot of people don't know this, but I, I applied the first time and didn't get in, right? Didn't even, didn't get in. And it, it, took, it took a toll on me. I'm not going to lie. It took a complete toll on me, um, but it was something that was necessary um, because that year that I, I took off, you know, um, that year that I took off after school, I committed myself to another level of human, right? I, I committed myself to, to really being an individual that was saying, hey, I'm all in. And I don't think I was as all in um, in something prior to. And a lot of that had to do with just that no fuel, fueling me. Because prior to that, you know, I, I'm not going to lie, things became very natural, it was very easy for me to kind of maneuver and things of that nature. Um, but that particular dynamic of, of getting a no, put a, put a battery in my back and say, hey, I really want to figure out how to, how to get to Georgetown University, hands down. I didn't apply to any other school. I knew I was going to go there. Um, the, the following year, ended up getting in. Um, and I moved to D.C. No family, no nothing, moved to D.C., and I told myself, I want to work in all aspects of not only sports, but figuring out how to impact uh, the community. How can I impact um, individuals' lives through sports, right? Through entertainment, so you will. Um, so moved down there, 
and had the opportunity to work with, you know, at the, at the time, Washington Redskins to um, NBC Sports Washington to, um, wow, the, the, the Wizards, the Mystics, you kind of name it. I had the opportunity to work to work within those dynamics. And then um, let's say the last two years of me being in, in DC, worked with Legends. Legends is a intellectual property company that focuses on sports entertainment and attractions and um, really dive deep on figuring out how do we um, launch an observation deck. So if you've ever been to like a Hancock Tower or to, um, you know, the World Trade Center, we brought, we brought that same model to the DC area. So I was a part of the inaugural team for, for that. And um, that experience itself, I think it, it catapult me to um, understanding, you know, the dynamics of being a true entrepreneurial spirit in a, a structure, right? So I call myself an, an entrepreneur, um, someone who can come into a dynamic and try to shake some things up that's already established. And before you know it, um, I ended up at Ole Miss. So I hope that wasn't long-winded, but uh, that that's basically the journey that you see today. Well, I, what I love about your story and as you described everything there is the fact that, you know, you, you really talked about that perseverance, how, you know, you, you went in, you, you didn't get in the first time you applied. Um, everybody goes through life. We, we don't always get the opportunities that we want or that we think we want, right? And sometimes we get diverted to something that's better. And sometimes you just have to suck it up and fight through and, and, and give it another shot and, and, and improve, whether it's being cut from a team or not getting a job that you want or, yeah. you know, getting laid off due to COVID or, or anything else that's out there. So uh, I give you a lot of credit for doing that. And uh, the other thing that really impressed me as I looked at your background was the fact that you had a, a really varied experience going through. You worked for a lot of different organizations. And I think early in, in the career, um, that's, that's a great opportunity. I know some people view it negatively when somebody comes in with a work history where they've been at places for right, relatively shorter amounts of time or something. Absolutely. But I think that, you know, it, you know, looking at, at the, at the timelines, right. You know, you weren't, you weren't at a place for, you know, a few months, you were still, you know, at most of these places for, for a significant period of time. Um, and you're getting to see what works for Varan, right. What, what is Varan interested in and, how does she build up that skill set? Because I know when I taught at Northwestern, we would talk to the students and say, you need to develop the skills that can allow you to succeed in the job you tell me you want to have, right? So if you want to be an athletic director or you want to be a, a GM of a pro sports team or you want to be an agent, right? The skill sets that allow you to succeed there are, are different. And you have to understand that. And most people, when you start, you don't know where you want to end up. So you, you know, you did a great job going through all of that, working in a lot of different areas within sports, right? For a team, for, for a media company, for hospitality, for all of the different things that are there. So now, now you've landed at, at Ole Miss. Yes. Um, tell us how you got brought down to the South. Wow. Um, and, and this is complete transparency moment. When I do these particularly podcasts, I, I want to ensure that someone is getting something from it, right? Um, it, it's important to understand, like, like what you just said, it, even if you get a no, you get laid off, you get whatever your, your journey looks like, you have to understand, you have to keep going. You have to keep going. You have to figure out what is that will? What was that? What is that will to win? What is that will to be different and set yourself apart from everyone? Right. Um, so as I was at, uh, um, legends, we ended up getting, you know, we, the business model didn't make any sense for the pandemic. Um, so before you know it, I had no opportunity. You know, I had no opportunity. And um, at, the, at the moment, I was always doing community work already. So I literally just put an LLC to my name of uh, the Win Solutions. Uh, Win is now basically stating, you know, whatever it is that you are um, looking to do, why start it tomorrow when you can do it this very moment? You can do it right now. 
And that is a whole organization in terms of how we can build different um, structure within your organization on community engagement initiatives, how we can build the framework for commu community and also communication plans. Again, my background is in, in public relations, corporate communication. So um, understanding how to do the framework of getting an organization set up in terms of what do they want to see within their social responsibility arm, right? Um, so how did I get to Ole Miss? I got to Ole Miss because of pure relationships, pure, pure relationships. Um, my GM at the at Legends, his background was in collegiate athletics. Mind you, I, the only background I had within collegiate athletics was being a student athlete. He calls me up one day, he says, Veron, you're talented. Um, and I, I can drop his name. His name's Graham Dunn. He's he's a fantastic. I talk to him to this day. Um, he's a, a a good good friend of mine. Um, he he called me up and said, "Hey, Veron, like I see, I know your potential. I know who you are. I, I've literally seen you uh, be an operations manager for over twenty employees, so supervisors, things of that nature. Um, there's this opportunity called the McClendon Foundation. Um, it's about getting minorities into the light of collegiate athletics and getting them into different avenues of collegiate athletics. Um, he sent me a link and I said, uh, I, I, I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't too uh, thrilled about the particular opportunity. One, because, and this is another key point here, taking a huge pay cut from what I came from in DC, um, I, I knew, that like, hey, do I want to take this opportunity or do I want to just figure out if there's more opportunities out there, right? So with the McClendon Foundation, again, it was an opportunity for people to truly immerse themselves into the field of, of college athletics, things of that nature. He said, hey, it's Ole Miss, it's a, it's a power five school. Um, the, the cost of living is fairly cheap. They're they're looking for someone in social responsibility, some, something that you do with your eyes closed, take a peek at it. And, and before you know it, I just I started to look into it, look into it, look into it, look into it. And the opportunity, one, it outweighed, it outweighed any and everything that I can potentially imagine. They were looking for a person who had some experience within their career, could come into an organization that had an entrepreneurial feel about themselves that can potentially uh, change the dynamic in which they wanted to see. Ole Miss did not have a social responsibility engagement department prior to me getting there. So they needed someone to come in and, and be, be, be intentional, right? To be very intentional about the, the growth that they wanted to see, especially coming off of a, a summer like that of, you know, um, you know, the social justice and the things that were going on within just in the world. They needed someone, somebody that was strong-willed and strong-minded. And before you know it, I, I literally did a interview on a Tuesday and they called me on a Friday and I ended up being there the, the you know the very next week so um before you know it, it this opportunity has truly been um it's it's been rewarding it's been rewarding and that's what i can i could truly say well it, it's it's an amazing opportunity to go as you said to really be part of the launch of of a new initiative at uh, a university uh you you look at at Ole miss Right, been around for a long, long time. Right, you you think of it in, in terms of th this is a big step for for the school in terms of creating this opportunity. And um, I know that it, it, the CSR area is is something newer for a lot of corporations. The, the big organizations have been doing it for a, a decade or so, but uh, most of the colleges and universities really only very recently started looking at that as something that they need to do as a separate function. Yep. You know, they did they did little pieces of it in elements in whether it was in player development or through their um, recruitment or in other areas like that. But very few that, that I'm aware of had a sustained 
effort, a focused and organized effort in, in the CSR space. So, you know, when, when you came down there, give us a little bit of, um, you know, what, what that looked like, what you were coming into, and, and then what kind of, uh, in a sense, mandate you were given from the school in terms of what your, your role was supposed to be. Yeah. Um, so coming into this particular space, the, or the, the arm was called um, student, student Athlete Enhancement. And under that student athlete enhancement, there's four different pillars. You have um, career development, uh, personal advancement, community engagement, and DEI, right? So those were the four things that, that really, you know, drive home that particular uh, organiz that, that line of work. Um, and we wanted to expand on that. And at the time, it's, it was a, the, the athletics um, associate director, and then we had a counselor as well. So it was only two people running the department. So when I came in, uh, it was my job to, to figure out one, because of my communications background, um, how can we enhance our social media presence? How can we enhance our community pe presence? And how can we be more diversified in our portfolio in terms of the community partners and building those relationships within the community? Um, so when my associate's director came, my associate director came to me, she said, hey, like, I want to lean on your strength. Your strength is building relationships. You're very personable. Um, so how can we um, take these initiatives that we have to the next level? Um, and my, my sole responsibility was to ensure, one, we can rebrand as the Department of Social Responsibility. So creating all of the, the the website and copyright materials online. Um, so my counterpart and I, we truly dig deep on figuring out well, what, what is the, the story that we want to, to tell um, when they come to our website, what does that look like? The initiative that we have, um, how are we going to be intentional? And I think you said something very important was have, how can we have systemic change across you know, Mississippi? And, and, and when you think about it and coming into Mississippi, I'm, I wasn't too sure exactly what I was coming into. Most individuals think Mississippi is this, this you know, this deep South and it's very racist, things of that nature. I'm gonna be completely honest. It, it's not what people think. It's not that bad. <laughs> it's not that bad. Well, I haven't experienced anything that was that bad. Let, let me say it that way. Um, um, however, there are things in the community that there are disparities, right? So Mississippi, if you look at the, the, the overall trajectory, it's the poorest state in America, um, has some of the poorest counties, um, they're dealing with a lot of different food deserts in the area. Um, one in four children are, are going through hunger. Like, so when you look at those particular statistics and everything that I try to do, and I think Ole Miss does a fantastic job, is looking at the data and looking at how can, with the data, how can we be better and how we can use our resources to really drive the needle. Um, and we, we constructed, you know, the initiative of Stronger Together. Stronger Together is the three pillars of um, literacy, financial literacy, and food sustainability. So those three pillars is something that I truly ensure that we are staying true to them and that we are utilizing our best judgment to ensure that the resources can be provided in a way that can enhance the community. Well, you've covered a lot of ground there. I want to back up for a minute to, sure. you, you talked about the student athlete enhancement area and, and you, uh, you referenced four things. And, and I think I got three of them. You talked about the career development, the community uh, enhancement, the DEI. And I know there was one more that uh, I don't think I caught professional no no i'm sorry so it's uh career development profess profession i'm sorry um personal advancement personal advancement yep gotcha. and then community engagement di yes sir so you know, and then you went to the literacy financial literacy um yep. food sustainability that you called stronger together yeah um so as as you look back at that student athlete enhancement right those those four areas, obviously, there's a lot of overlap, but the, the skill sets and everything that are being developed are, are still different in, in each of those four 
four areas. So maybe take us through a little bit about what goes on in, in each of those four. Yeah, so uh, my counterpart, uh, she is oversee the career development piece and the personal advancement. And those two components, we ensure that we are placing student athletes um, in placement after college, right? Like, are they getting the resources that they need to um, build a proper resume? Are they um, on LinkedIn and how are they using their LinkedIn? Um, giving them resources on poten potentially what does it look like when you are going into an interview? How do you conduct yourself in an interview? Uh, we give, we literally have over 45 different initiatives on figuring out how to make the student athlete a better individual um, when they came in. Um, and now just with the social responsibility piece, it's not just focused on student athletes. It's also focusing on the staff as well, figuring out how to uh, drive the needle on personally um, advancing their overall professional experience as well. Um, so our our dynamic in that regards, again, it's, it's all about building partnerships with employment individuals um, so that we can have those relationships to say, hey, we know a, a student athlete that's not only doing fantastic on the court or on the field or wherever their respective you know, competition is, but this individual is really about their business. And we ensure that we give them those tools in that regards. And then we have different speakers come in and so on and so forth. And then myself, community engagement in DEI. Um, it's my job to ensure that I can give them different um, opportunities to be immersed in the community, to figure out how can we um, partner with different schools. So we do something called uh, reading with the Rebs, and then we do virtual conversations with schools around the the, the Mississippi uh, the Mississippi cohort. Uh, we do feed the sip. Uh, Feed the Sip is an initiative that I, I started uh, here in, Mrs. in Ole Miss, and it's about exactly what I was telling you, with food of sustainability. Um, we, we knew that the, the data says that one in every four you know, student is um, dealing with hunger. So we adopted Quitman County and Tunica County, and we donated over 570 uh, food bags just so that they can, you know, be ensured that they have some, some, some food there. Um, not saying that those communities are, you know, super, super struggling, but we want to do our part, right? We want to ensure we do our part. Um, so there's, there's a lot of different components there in terms of um, ensuring that we have conversations about what, what's going on in the world um, to ensure that people feel comfortable um, not only coming to work, but they feel comfortable uh, being in the, the Ole Miss, you know, atmosphere. Yeah, and you, you touched on some key points about what's going on in the world, right? Because yeah. our world changes quickly, sure. right? We're, we're, we're dealing with things, especially when you're talking about the, the issues on social justice, on DEI. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we may be in a, a calm spot one week and, and six hours later, something happens in the country and um, the perspective is very different. And so... Right. It's I think what you talked about is you've got to be able to react to the current environment because uh, none of the things that you're working on in, in any of those four spheres of career development, personal advancement, community enhancement and DEI. Right. Th those aren't textbooks. Those aren't things that have existed and are, are static and you can just use the same thing over and over because how you need to develop your career in advance looks very different today than it did five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, just with the tools, with social media, with, um, you know, the, the strategies on LinkedIn and, and everywhere else. I think people, you take Zoom, just like we're doing this as an example. Um, a few years ago, when I first started using Zoom was probably the, the fall of 18 and, and people were like, what is this crazy thing that, you know, you got to sit at a computer and you see the little Brady Bunch screen with uh, all the different pictures and um, it, it's very different. But now you've been there for a while. I want to hear more about some of these programs with the, the, the literacy and, and financial literacy as well. Yeah, so again, with the literacy piece, we ensure that we, we get into these schools um, and prior to the pandemic, and mind you, I was on, I've was i only been here for about six months, so October 1 was my first day. 
Um, so prior to the pandemic, uh, the student athletes will go to these schools and they would read with the kids and they would um, ensure that that there are um, that they're you know reading at a, a a reasonable level where they're supposed to be and having that connection right when you can actually feel touch um, a, a student athlete I think those kids their eyes literally get as big as the moon um, and our our own our focus is also yeah yes we we want to enhance you know your reading skills but we want to show you that it's possible it's possible to come to the flagship it's possible to be a student athlete and and dominate in your sport and dominate in the community it's possible to 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 enhance your circumstances right so I think that component is truly important to us as well um, so reading with the Rebs is our our continual uh, program that we do throughout the year. Um, and we, we have a, a partnership also with the, the Lafayette County, um, the coalition to ensure that we're doing some, some readings with the, the, the coaches and then we're doing some reading with some of the executive staff so that they know that it's from the top down, that we truly, um, we're invested into the, the literacy piece from the top down. Um, and then with the financial piece, we, we partnered with Region Bank, um, where we have our freshmen and our transfer students uh, come in and we, we ensure that they know the basics about banking, that they know the basics about um, how to budget, um, how, we, how they can utilize, you know, the funds that they do get or whatever, whatever you know, that they do have, how to make it work for them. So uh, we have, again, a lot of different programs and, and next year is definitely going to be more robust um, because we are going to be, you know, we're not going to have, we, we will pr probably do Zoom, but not as much. Uh, we really, we, we're excited to get back into that face-to-face -face contact with our student athletes because there's nothing like it, right? There's nothing like really um, feeling the energy of, of human contact, so. Yeah, the, the energy, I think, is something we've all missed in this Zoom era, obviously, uh, Zoom is light years ahead of just having a phone call, right? I can I can see you, we can engage, you can get a feel for somebody's energy and their their passion for the work that they're doing. And one of the things we love at Sports Philanthropy Network is just connecting with the hundreds and hundreds, literally thousands of amazing organizations that are doing work on the ground and in their communities and building stronger, healthier, and more inclusive communities through sports. And, and that's really what, what our passion is, is to, to support that. And so uh, I want to congratulate you on, on what you've done and, and what you've accomplished. So now you've got your feet on the ground there at, at Ole Miss. You're coming up into the summer. Hopefully we're putting COVID in the rear view mirror and looking ahead for, for the fall where I think everybody anticipates um, football will be able to be back to relatively close to normal, full capacity, things like that. But from your end, um, again, as things open up, you're able to go places, engage the student athletes in a way that wasn't possible during, during COVID. So Talk a little bit about what you see on the horizon for for yourself and and Old Miss in this program over the next twelve months. Wow, that's that's a fantastic question. Um, there's something that I'm truly truly passionate about. It's called the Umity Project. Um, Umity, as in U M capital U M I T Y, um, playing off of the University of Mississippi. Um, and Umity was actually um, that that particular phrase was you know coined by a student athlete which i think is fantastic and we wanted to ensure again everything that we do is to ensure that we are immersing the student athlete so we're like hey we want to bring that uh that piece to it um so i i'm, I'm calling it the, the humidity project and this is a particular project that we are adopting uh, two counties, Quimby County and Tunica County, which I, I mentioned prior to, and that we're going to fully immerse ourselves there because that's the only way we can see systemic growth, right? When we are consistent and where we can um, truly see the, the the passion and the love, um, you know, for these these in, these institutions. So um, what what that looks like is uh, that we're going to do some fitness trainings with the students that are in these counties. We're going to um, continue to read and do some pen pal with these students, right? 
It looks like, um, you know, us going there and potentially, you know, beautifying their campus, right? To ensure that, you know, there's some connection there. Um, that looks like continuing to do the Feed the Sit program where we're giving them some healthy choices uh, for food sustainability for our, our program. And that even means having them and inviting them to come to Ole Miss games, right? So that they can see the, the lights, so they can see um, some of the opportunities that they could uh, touch in their, in their rear view mirror. So um, it looks like a, a robust program that um, it's more so like a, a brother sister program for our student athletes to really um, uh, be, to really be a, a pillar of not just, hey, we're going to do one thing and one thing only, or one initiative, one initiative only, but these kids will continually see the same kids and hopefully see the growth within those kids. So, so it's an amazing uh, amount of moving parts you have there, and especially for uh, a relatively new program. So I commend you and congratulate you on doing that. If people want to reach out and, and find a way to help or learn more about the work you're doing? What's the best way for them to do that? Wow, um, they, can, they can go to uh, www.omissports.com. Um, our, our website is up and just go to the social responsibility tab. You'll see some of the cool things that we are already doing and, and follow us on social media. Our social media presence is becoming uh, something that we are cherishing. You'll see some of the student athletes that are, are crushing it. Again, not only in their competition, but outside of, the, of, the, uh, of their competition. And, um, and that is Total Rebs, Total Rebs, and you can, Follow us on Twitter, follow us on, on Instagram, and we also have a LinkedIn account as well, uh, Professional Reb. So we're, we're truly excited, man, and, and we're, 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 we're really, we're just excited. We're excited for the, the horizon and what, what we really want to bring to this, this, not only to oh, Oxford, right, but to Mississippi at large. So we're excited, and I, I appreciate you, Roy. Well, we, we appreciate everything that you're doing. Uh, it's incredible work. And I want to uh, congratulate you on, on, on your, everything that you've accomplished. So um, before we let you go, I do want to take a minute here to put you on the spot. So oh. we're going to wave our uh, sports philanthropy magic wand. And we're going to use our superpowers and we're going to appoint you as commissioner of one of the sports. So tell us what sport that would be. Oh, man. <laughs> um, I would say the I would say the WNBA. OK, so you're taking over the WNBA now and, and you're in charge and you have control of everything going on there. Um, what, what does that look like? What? Uh, what, what do you want to do? What's your first initiative or first change you want to make? Wow, the first change. Um, you know, they're already doing fantastic work over there. Um, and just to see, you know, the intentionality um, that they are, are giving women voices um, is, is, fanta is fantastic from the recent um, uniform changes that they also have. Um, but one change that I, Roy, and I know you told me like this was going to happen. <laughs> one change, um, retiring, the, the WNBA individuals who, you know, retire, I would love to figure out a, a program for them. I know Nike does something very similar in terms of uh, recruiting um, different uh, WNBA players over to Nike. And they actually have a program called WIN, um, but but giving them a robust avenue outside of um, their life after sports. Because again, you know, just as a student athlete, it could, when you think about the grand scheme of you know life after sports, it can be kind of scary. Um, so just building out a a program uh, for retired um, athletes, uh, women athletes. And, and seeing, you know, how could we utilize their, their talents elsewhere, I think is something that I would definitely try to, to, to improve. Well, I, I think that's, an, that's a great point because you look at 
for example, in, in some of the men's sports, right? Golf, golf in particular, right? You have the seniors tour, right? You, or the, you know, now the, you know, the, the champions tour right now, they call it because they don't like the term seniors, but you, you look at retired players in many of the other sports and, and they do a really good job of spotlighting and highlighting the work um, and, and some of their superstars, because just, you know, just because they're done playing mm -hmm. doesn't mean their brand is done and that their impact is done. And especially in the social responsibility space that you're working in, these are women that have been leaders, right? They've been at the front line and voices that can really make a, a strong impact. They've seen it, they've been doing it for a significant amount of time. And you hate to lose that strength and have them just go into the background, you want them to continue to lead that charge. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Varan, we wanna thank you so much for coming on with us today. We really appreciate your insight and look forward to working and collaborating together to support your efforts. Sounds like a plan. Thanks, Varan, truly appreciate it. And for all of our viewers and listeners, we appreciate you taking the time to join us today on the Sports Philanthropy Podcast. This is your host, Roy Kessel, signing off. We hope you join us next time. Please remember to live generously. Thank you.